Hello, everyone. We're going to get started. Um, we're going to wait for people to join us, but um, we'll get going pretty soon. We have a lot to talk about. So maybe we'll get going. My name is Stephanie Brooks. I'm the gallery director of the Free Art Gallery and Sculpture Garden at the Riverside Art Center. And I'm very, very pleased to introduce Salim Moore as the guest curator for our exhibition, The Kitchen Sink. And um, Salim is an artist and a curator whose work involves mythologies within the um, history and tradition of painting. And Salim um, worked on this exhibition to talk about how um, an artist practice works with the mythologies of what one does in one's studio. So I want to turn it over to Salim to talk about the curatorial practice and then also to introduce the artists who are with us and exhibiting their brilliant works at the Riverside Art Center Free Art Gallery. Take it away, Salim. Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you all hear me? Okay. Does it sound good? Fantastic. Um, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Um, thank you to Zara, Cassidy, Bimbola, Kelly, our very talented artists for um, taking a leap of faith with the show. Um, the show is titled The Kitchen Sink. Um, which is, uh, maybe you guys know the idiom, everything but the kitchen sink, um, which kind of is basically um, whatever you have left to throw at a problem, or in my experience, a sandwich. Um, I was kind of inspired uh, by a place in Pasadena, California, where I was uh, born and raised called the Pasadena Sandwich Company. And they have a sandwich on their menu, which is a style of sandwich called the kitchen sink sandwich, where basically the way it's talked about is the chef, her mood, how she feels, and whatever we have in our kitchen. And so it's basically just kind of rolling the dice. Um, and to add a little bit of um, chance, the sandwich cost like $13. And that was in 2007. So it was pretty expensive back then. Um, and so I was thinking about how we could apply that kind of approach to a show um, here at the Riverside Art Center. Um, and one second, I'm gonna let Melissa in the room here. Um, I was thinking about how we could apply that approach to the Riverside Art Center and also inviting artists to show works from their studio that might fit that kind of spirit. Um, I used to work at the Art Institute of Chicago in the Prince of, Prints and Drawings department. And so what was kind of exciting about that is 70% of what you, uh, only rather what I should say is only 30% of the museum's collections are on view at any given time. And the other 70% is off of view and held in the archives. And so I was kind of thinking about that in terms of looking at drawings, sketchbooks, because artists have prolific output, but a lot of times we don't necessarily get to see everything that is exhibition ready. So I was asking, um, Cassidy, Bimbola, Kelly, Zara, Sophie, and Mari Eastman to kind of take a leap of faith and show works that they might not necessarily think um, of as being exhibition ready or stuff that they were more ex experimenting with um, or kind of trying to take a chance on. And so the concept of the show was to invite them to kind of think about what are the kitchen sink sinks of your studio? Um, and due to COVID, right, and social distancing, we couldn't do a ton of studio visits, 
um, and have meetings or go get coffee or go to the bar. So a lot of the work was um, up to the artist to decide and really look around their studio and then uh, drop it off uh, here at the Riverside Art Center. Um, and so I'm gonna transition really quickly because I know also due to COVID, a lot of people haven't been able to see the show. So I'm just gonna take like a quick uh, lap around the gallery with my iPhone. I'm gonna switch over and then I'll just make sure you all can hear me and then uh, we'll have a little tour. Sick. All right, so here I am in the front room of the gallery. And in this room, we have the um, paintings of Kelly Nybert on this wall. I'll give each one a little moment of its own. We have a first time sculpture as well. And then moving over to this wall, these are the works of Cassidy Early. So we have uh, two pairs of three. And I'm, we'll go down the line and give each one its own moment as well. And then these two right here are also Kelly's work, a cat and a dog. And then I'm gonna come into the back room here. And in the back room, we have works by Zara, Sophie, Mari, and Bimbola back here. And so these uh, the next four works I'll show you are all by Bimbola Akinbola. And then in the center of the room, we have some sketchbooks by Mari Eastman. If you guys get a chance, you may come in and flip through these. There are sketchbooks and diaries. And then on this wall, we have um, oil paintings by Sophie. Neither Sophie or Mari could be here today due to family stuff, but they're here in spirit. And then last, we have Zara right here. And I'll do a little zoom because there are some fine details. And so I'm gonna go back to the desktop now and I can screen share um, from the desktop. So if you all wanted to return to these works during the Q&A, we can share them from the screen. Or if it's really, really important, we can come back to the phone as well. Okay, I'm back at the desktop now. Can you all hear me okay? Fantastic. So, I was gonna start with a question for uh, you all. Uh, that is Cassidy, Bimbola, Kelly, and Zara. And I would like it if each of you could perhaps take maybe two to three minutes, just kind of um, a quick answer um, about your work. The question I was curious about was kind of about uh, one of the common bonds or through lines that I noticed that connects all of the work in the show was kind of this uh, theme of autobiography. Um, because uh, just a little bit of background for all of you, none of these artists had met each other before because um, we didn't have opportunities to get together. And so one something that was kind of surprising that came up through all of it is this kind of theme of all of you thinking about maybe nonfiction or incorporating 
things that are a part of your lives um, that are happening um, right now or in the past into the works. And so I was wondering if each of you guys could just take a minute or two to talk about um, how you each kind of think about um, autobiography or yourself um, as it relates to your art. Um, I will just call everyone out on the order on my screen. And so uh, Kelly, you are in the top row. So would you mind starting? Yes, <laughs> all right, don't mind. Um, so yeah, um, I guess like, you know, I've, I've been, uh, yeah, I'm Kelly Nybert. Um, I, I know Salim uh, from, from Postback uh, at SAC. We, we went to grad school together then after that. Um, and it's been, yeah, it's been really incredible uh, being in the show and seeing everybody else's work um, come together like this. Um, but I, I think like I've, I've been making paintings and, and drawings and, you know, sculptures to an extent since I was a little kid. And um, I think, you know, I, I was lucky enough to, um, you know, share my life with a lot of animals when I was growing up. And I, and I kind of, I grew up kind of adjacent to our family farm, like my, my grandfather's farm. So I think, um, you know, the reason that animals are so prevalent in my work is because, you know, I've been kind of painting and drawing them since I was a really little kid. And, uh, you know, I think like when I came to grad school, I was kind of, um, I, I, I moved far away from my family. Um, I left my, my partner and my cat behind. And I think the work kind of emptied out and was all about kind of this empty interior space for a while. Um, and then, you know, I, the, the animals and the people kind of crept back in um, when my, my partner and cat moved back to Chicago with me. Um, so, I, you know, I think, you know, all along I was kind of, uh, you know, trying to figure out like what my work was about and like, you know, you know, what exactly I, I needed to paint. I think, um, you know, I, I was kind of not letting myself paint cats and dogs for a long time because that felt kind of self-indulgent to me, but like there's something about um, just the kind of like joy that they bring and like, you know, how just like the, the beautiful shapes that they make, just even like, you know, just observing them in the house, like when light hits them in a certain way um, that, uh, you know, I eventually I was just like, why am I not making work about this, you know? Um, so I think, um, you know, now very much, and when I came to, to school at SEC too, I um, kind of stumbled upon the work of Pierre Bonnard and I'd never seen his work before. And, you know, his work is very much filled with, you know, the, the people that, that he loved, the animals that he loved, um, you know, and it's, it's kind of um, like, it's all about that. And, um, you know, so I think, I think that one, once I discovered that, you know, it's like, here's this, this incredible painter <laughs> that, you know, is doing what I wanted to do. I was like, why am I, like, why am I, why is my work so like lonely and sterile? Like, you know, why, why am I not filling it with, with these, um, with these people and animals that, that mean a lot to me? Um, so now I, I kind of think about my work, um, kind of like, you know, I think it's a, like very much about love and, and, um, you know, like, like, um, the, the one, uh, painting in the show, the newest one is, uh, the, the pink, the, the, it's the, the hound dog like on the pink kind of background. Um, and th that's an animal that um, he actually, he lived next to my parents. Like he wasn't my parents' dog, but he would come over all the time and hang out with my dad. And then his family moved, like they moved away. <laughs> so it was like, you know, I think about this dog all the time because he, he meant he meant a lot to us. And then, you know, now that he's not in our lives anymore, like it's just like, how do I kind of memorialize this animal? And also like, you know, just his coat was so beautiful. And like, um, you know, how, like how, how can I, think about the patterns of his fur is like, you know, I, you know, I can think about abstraction. I can think about like ways to kind of manipulate the viewer's eyes, like through the painting, just by using the, the patterns of this fur. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I think that that's, yeah, my work is incredibly autobiographical and, um, you know, it was, it was really cool to see like how, how that thread kind of continues like, throughout the work of everybody else in the, in the, in the show too. Um, Thank you for sharing, Kelly. I really yeah. appreciate that. Next up, um, moving down to the second row, Cassidy. Hello. Um, wait, cool. Um, thanks for having me, everyone. Thanks for coming out uh, today. I'm trying this new thing where I can't see my own face on Zoom. So it's actually kind of wild right now. It's like, so whatever, but you know, try it. It helps sometimes. Um, so uh, I think my work coming in 
when I was thinking about what to put in the kitchen sink, it was like, I thought a lot about how my practice has been changing since grad school. So I graduated in the spring of 2020. Um, and then my mom recently passed away in September. So I've been thinking about, I mean, I really haven't been thinking about <laughs> painting as much, right? So the drawings for me were a way to have this constant material excitement that was always new and always fresh um, because I was making these drawings on frosted mylar. Uh, and if anyone has worked with frosted mylar, you'll know what I mean. It's like this immediate gratification. And that was kind of all I was concerned with feeling. Um, so, you know, and along the same lines, I think as Kelly, like that's how the drawing of my mom's dog came in, Darren. Um, and it's also like the drawings of myself, like post some sort of, uh, you know, dreamscape top surgery. Um, and I think uh, the second part, so after I make all the drawings, I was thinking about how do I put them together? Like, how do you ground them in space? And because the mylar is so floaty um, and gray and transparent and beautiful because of that, but it really doesn't translate well, except when you're literally drawing on it. Um, so I decided to collage them all with a drawing underneath. And sometimes that drawing um, was very directly related to what the image on the front was, but sometimes it was not. Uh, sometimes it was just about colors interacting um, or shapes interacting. And in that way, it did feel like they felt so um, sketchbook-like or, you know, in the way that collages often do. It's like this, like, you know, hyper-dramatic or hyper-personal connection between, uh, between different things. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Cassidy. Um, Spimbola, would you like to go next? Yeah, um, thanks so much, Salim, for um, pulling this show together. Uh, and yeah, my work is also, I'm, I'm like processing what I've heard and also thinking about um, what I wanna say, but yeah, my work is also uh, very autobiographical and I was, I think at the time that I was thinking about what to put in the show, I was hyper aware that for the last like two years, I feel like I've been, so I finished my PhD in American studies in 2018. And so I have a kind of like almost, and I'm now a professor in the performance studies department. So I spent a lot of time like dreaming about like, I don't know if you all know this kind of quiet pressure when you're not making work, like oh, I need to be making work, I want to be making work, but like not doing it. And then after I completed my degree, I had like two years where I was just making so much stuff, but kind of like in isolation. So just like just making stuff and like putting it in my portfolio. So the show felt like, okay, I have all this like random, like all this stuff that I've made. Um, so the three woven paintings, the first of them, uh, was my work generally is inspired by my family um, and people that I know. I work from, like I have a kind of obsession with photographs and family photographs especially um, and like going through them and like framing them and hanging them up doesn't feel sufficient. So I'm always trying to figure out like, I don't know, like how to spend more time with them or how to look more deeply at them. Um, so all of the paintings are inspired from photographs um, and people that I know, except for the very first of those woven photographs that I did, which is kind of, a, it's a scene from the beach uh, right by my apartment in Rogers Park. And uh, it's, I had, you know, there, there, it was like this whole moment, it was like these three little boys and like some kind of uh, guardian figure and, uh, 
the boys, it was time to go, but they, they kept on getting back in the water and like stalling by being like, oh, I need to like wash the sand off my feet. And then they would come back and like dry off and then do that. And like the towel was getting soaked and I was watching them. And so I had these images and I did two paintings inspired by that scene. And I didn't love either of the paintings. Like they didn't feel complete. And then on New Year's Eve, I had this kind of idea of what if I like, what if I cut them up and weave them together? And that, and it felt like an extremely risky move. So I was like, my Virgo brain was like, oh, well, I could do it in Photoshop. I could like slice it up and like do it virtually, like digitally and see if it's gonna work and then do it in real life. But then I just didn't have the patience for it. And so it was this like moment of just like cutting up these paintings um, and hoping that it would work out. Uh, and I really liked it. And then I, I repeated it a few times with other paintings. Um, and so uh, part of it is like, it's still inspired by like what to do with photographs or what to do with images that like don't quite feel enough. Like painting the thing is not enough, but how do I like layer it up? And then it's also this extreme risk taking, like creating paintings with the knowledge that I'm just gonna cut them up um, all of the slices don't fit into the weaving. So I end up like also like disposing of some of it, um, kind of moving towards this place where the paintings are a little bit less, it feels a little bit less precious or something. Like I can, I can go into it knowing that I, I have to let some of it go. Um, and then like, I think lastly, just like the physicality of, of the weaving process and the, and then like, what do you do with it? How do you display it? And Salim and I had this conversation. Like, I was like, I don't know how to display them. I don't know what frame they should go in. I don't know what to do with these like kind of raggedy like edges. Um, and so the opportunity to kind of like show them like that felt like something very appropriate for this show that's about like work that you don't know if it's ready or not. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. And um, Zara, do you want to tell us about yours? Hi guys, um, I um, have definitely been influenced by the idea of autobiography and um, home collections for a long time. Um, like this, this quilt in the background is my mother made, it's called the charm quilt. And actually quilters just find their scraps of, um, you know, worn out clothing and uh, clothes clothes like exchange from friends. And I loved that concept, but I, I don't have the patience to create something like something like this. So I thought about, you know, this, all these cloths accumulate in your life, you know, your favorite t-shirt, your, um, you know, the hat you wore uh, during some significant moment, you know, they're like, they become these powerful objects that I just didn't want to throw away. So um, I felt like, uh, collecting them and then putting them into the piece was, I mean, I consider it a kind of um, autobiographical piece. Um, and the timing was really good uh, for Kitchen Sink because I had just finished it. I started it in 2015 and then I moved and it sat around for a year and I forgot about it. And then I picked it up again in the pandemic and started really working on it in earnest. and. Um, Part of the process was trying to show where the, the origins of where the cloth came from. So um, I tried to document that on Instagram and then I uh, kind of put some of those um, stories together in a little video. It's somewhere, uh, so somewhere linked on the Instagram page, I think, or it will be soon. Thank you. Yes, the video is um, on the Riverside Arts Center website. Um, some of you guys have already answered my next question a little bit, um, but maybe you can expand upon it a little bit more. And, and so I think one thing that I noticed um, coming in the gallery is how wonderfully clean um, and excellent everyone's work looks. It's very polished, it's very beautiful, which is not quite what I was expecting. I think my assumption was that because 
it would works would be coming from the bowels and the forgotten corners of people's studios that it would be um, more all over the place. Um, and so that is a compliment. The work looks really good. And so what I was wondering is if you guys could talk about how you, because that makes me think about, and I'd be curious to know if you could all talk a little bit about how you decided upon choosing. Because um, I assume that you guys had different works that you were looking at. Um, and so maybe actually we could start, Zara, maybe you could go a little bit more and then we can go backwards up to Kelly. Um, about how I chose uh, the quilt. Um, well, the timing, I mean, the, the concept of kitchen sink and, uh, you know, throwing everything in, that was definitely in my mind when I created the quilt. It's supposed to be this kind of assault um, of the senses with like a lot of color and objects, you know, mixed together. So um, I definitely related the title. Um, and because it took so long to create, it's, it's, it's kind of an, a, a one-off in compared to the other, my other work, you know? So that's, I think for it being like a little secretive, it's, it's just, it's just taken so long to make. I, there's only one of them. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, how about you, Bimbola? I was thinking about work that no one had seen yet. Um, I guess with the exception of my, my partner. Um, so like, you know, I have an Instagram and I, and it's, really the only place where I share my work and so I was thinking about what hadn't I posted um which honest and, and and like for no particular reason I mean it's something I'm thinking about now like why hadn't I posted it or um I think they are pieces that feel with the exception of the first woven piece I did share that one but then the other three I think they were pieces that um took a really long time to complete so after I started that first one I kind of very quickly started the paintings for the next two and and then they and then they sat incomplete for most of 2020 and it was like the week before the new year that I was like I need to wrap these up like and so I kind of had like an afternoon where I just or like maybe a, a weekend where I just finished um those three the, the other three and so maybe that was part of it that at the time it might have been timing but at the time that you reached out they were the kind of most recently finished um you know forgotten about for the bulk of the year um yeah um and then in terms you know one of them is of a good friend of mine that passed away a couple of years ago and so I think when I started it I don't even know if I intended to share it or show it like it felt like it was more it was more for me or it was just like a I didn't have a plan for it uh and this felt like a good like a it was like oh this is a thing that I've been kind of holding close but I don't I don't have a clear reason I just I just was so when invited to share something that I had been holding close if I felt like I felt ready ready to do that yeah Thank you so much. Um, how about you, Cassidy? Yeah, um, it's- Looks like Cassidy may have frozen. Hi, so me. Maybe, um, oh, Cassidy, you froze. Can you uh, start from the top? Oh, yep. <laughs> um, oh, connection unstable, fantastic. Um, yeah, okay, where, where did I go? Where did I start from? Uh, okay, yeah, I think it's interesting that we're all, um, so far thinking about this timeliness, like whatever's happening right now or the most recent thing. Um, and I'm probably not alone in being kind of cursed by like, once I start something new, whether it's with a new material or, or a new subject or a new shape or something, I suddenly, I kind of like lose everything else, like everything that happened. Not that I lose the things I've learned from them, but I just don't care about it anymore. Or sometimes I get embarrassed when I look at older things, even if it's something I was really proud of a year ago. Um, so when you prompted us with the, the 
the show, I looked through stacks of old drawings and I was like, okay, we got this. Like, I'm going to embellish these old drawings with the, the mylar. Um, and I almost couldn't do it. And I think part of it was about a certain preciousness that I didn't expect to feel about older work. Um, uh, but also that combined with the sort of like, I don't know, I, like, and like drawings are so fast. And I was like, well, I have all these drawings, like these feel old now anyway, like they feel like they're hidden anyway. Um, so even getting a chance to look at them on a wall because before they were in just piles, um, uh, just piles in my studio or in my living room. So that felt, it like already felt like diving into the recesses even though it was brand new. <laughs> Thanks for that insight. That's really cool to hear. And uh, Kelly, how about you? Yeah, um, so yeah, I, I don't know if th there are a few of you that have been in my studio uh, and it's always kind of a kind of a disaster <laughs> area. So like, sometimes I'll, I'll kind of lose track of things um, like under papers and, and you know, and sometimes I'll stumble upon paintings. That I'm like, oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> um, so I kind of, I did like kind of a scavenger hunt like around my studio and in my storage unit. And I was kind of, um, I, I got really lucky um, out of grad school. I, I was invited to do a show up in uh, Portland, Maine with Grant Walquist Gallery. Um, and I, I, that was in 2019. And I, I made a lot of work for that show. Um, and only some of it got selected to, to go because, you know, I had to ship it and, and um, you know, the gallery is, is Kind of on the smaller side, um, so I had I had a lot of paintings um, that I that I kind of made in, in thinking about like you know um, thinking about that particular show that that I, I was really proud of but never kind of got to see um, like it never never got to be displayed anywhere. Um, so I've been kind of thinking about that work for a long time, and um, so I, I kind of stumbled upon a couple of the paintings. So like the painting of my my dad, uh, it's called Mantis, and he's holding the praying mantis. Um, the the howl painting it's like the the dog that's howling that's actually it's hung up behind Celine or Celine sitting um, um, that painting I made for that show um, I'm trying to think of what else um, I think and they, there was a paint there's a painting in in the show currently that that did go to Maine and that's the the one the cat on toilet um, you know so I you know I was kind of thinking about like you know seeing those those three works together for the first time um, uh, I thought you know I thought the that would be really a cool thing to see. Um, and then also the, the ceramics, like I, um, so I, I got hired at Wolf Street Art Center back in 2019 also. And, um, you know, I've gotten to kind of dip my toe into, into sculpture for the first time, uh, just through having access to the kilns and, and things like that from working there. Um, and I'm still incredibly new <laughs> to ceramics and, you know, I make Make a lot of mistakes, <laughs> um, so you know the, those works. Um, the you know the two sculptures, the one that's hanging on the wall, the dog head, and then the uh, the cat that's laying on the pedestal. Like those are um, like super experimental, and they like you know they're not not glazed super well. The the, the cat sculpture is not glazed at all, so like they they kind of feel <laughs> like very um, you know they're just kind of like small like. Uh, yeah, tentative, <laughs> careful steps forward into the world of ceramics. Um, um, and I'm, you know, it's something that I'm really super excited to experiment with in, in the future, but you know, they're, they're pieces that I, I, I liked a lot. <laughs> like even, even if they feel kind of scary to put out in the world, like, I, you know, I thought that they, they made sense for the show. Um, you know, so that I feel like those are definitely the, <laughs> the pieces of mine that, that feel um, kind of the most unfinished and like, like, oh, we'll put them up here and see what happens. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so now what I was thinking I will do is I'm gonna share my own screen and go into the presenter view and just do a slideshow of all the images in the show. And while that will give you guys some time to formulate your questions, we, we can transition to Q and A. Um, and if there's any questions you guys have, please feel free to um, ask them via video, or we can um, you can type them in the chat as well. But I'll like kind of run through the slideshow to give everybody a minute to kind of think about what they want to say or ask. And also, 
if you want me to pause on something because you have a question about it, that would, this would be a good time. So first I'm gonna go through Bimbola's works here. Yeah, so do you, does anyone have any questions at all? I have a question. Yes. <laughs> um, I was uh, thinking about what you said, Kelly, about um, kind of the, like the moment that you were like not, trying not to paint the thing that was coming easiest because it felt like too self-indulgent. And I was, and I, I have like a similar, like I've been doing this daily uh, self-portrait thing since the beginning of February, which is coming, it, it feels like an it feels like an intuitive and easy way to be painting every day. And also I'm realizing that I have all of this baggage around self-portraits. Like I've like deeply resisted painting them. I probably I think I up until this moment I had not painted very many self-portraits because I had been telling myself like I just shouldn't. It's that, I don't know. I, I don't know where I picked it up. And so I was wondering for like the rest of you, what is the thing that, like, where is the tension? Like the thing that you want to paint and then the story that you tell yourself or like the thing that you want to make. And then uh, <laughs> like the story you tell yourself about whether or not you should make that thing. And just like, yeah, if there's any of that in in what work you choose to share um, and what work kind of stays in the sketchbook or gets tucked away. I think for me, because I've resisted doing self portraiture also, and I think like, like I, I was like, there's something that felt kind of narcissistic about it for some reason, but like, like I, I love looking at other artists self portraits and I think that they're so telling and like, like I like I, there's some of my favorite works that I've seen from artists and I'm like, why, like, why why do I feel like I can't do that? <laughs> you know, like I, I think there's like this little voice in my head that, you know, when I, because my, you know, like, and I like you guys probably feel this way too, like your work's so autobiographical also, but it's like, well, nobody cares about <laughs> like what's going on in your personal life. And it's like, but you know, I think, I think that that's like a falsehood. Like, so like that every time I, yeah, like I, I have also like, I used to draw myself a lot and I'm like, what, you know, why am I hesitant to do that? Like, so I think, like that's something that maybe we all need to just like kind of <laughs> like push aside like it's, it's not you know and I feel like it's a good way to check in with yourself every year too like I try to do at least once a, one a year and then it's like as you age you can kind of see like how how different your face looks and you know it's just, just um and it again comes like kind of a history of of just your experiences and and just what you've been through <laughs> like um so I don't know yeah I, I I can definitely relate to that and uh yeah, yeah I'm kind of curious uh what you guys have to say about it as well. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a, um, a tethered question for y'all, um, you artists in this sweet exhibition. Because uh, I think like one thing, um, uh, Celine talked about autobiography, but I think like intimacy is another um, way that these works connect. And I like how um, Kelly was talking about like, looking inward but in and also like with like portraiture but also how you paint things that um are close to you and so i would love to hear how intimacy works in your studio practice in this beautiful context of the kitchen sink um i'll give it a shot i uh, saw you smiling <laughs> I, um, I find as a rule that I, I try to make the work no matter what, whether it's, whether I 
it's just for me or, you know, without any intention of who the audience is. And then what usually ends up happening is the audience, I mean, the, the work that I make just for me ends up being the work that other people are attracted to as well, because there's some sort of innate, when you're being um, kind of autobiographical and you're trying to tap into something, um, I think other people can kind of sense that struggle as well, or they like sense, or maybe they're relating it to, um, you know, memory or nostalgia, you know, reaching for, for something. But I, I think um, it is interesting how all our work revolves around uh, like small moments and intimate moments. And then um, there's a lot of animals in all the work too, which I kind of, I love because I feel like that is, um, it's like feelings of home, maybe, you know, our animals are kind of part of our home life. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm relating all that to. So do you what all think you about intimacy with your works in your studio practice? Yeah, um, I can jump in too. I think so, and I mean, relating to both of these topics, like the self-portrait and the intimacy, it feels like for me, self-portraits are, sometimes some self-portraits feel like the only thing I can do. Like maybe, maybe like finding my body, whether it's what I am, what my body is now, or what, it, what I want it to be, um, like that sometimes feels like just an act of necessity. Um, but also an act of care. I remember talking with one of my family members and she told me, because I made this series of body paintings where I like just looked at my stomach or looked at my legs and my feet and my hands and, or like down at my chest. And um, my aunt, who's like a fitness freak, really. And, and it was just like, wow, like that's so amazing. You felt like you felt like you could do that. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, how did that feel? And I was like, well, it felt like I was taking care of myself. Like this is me loving my body or like if it's not love, then it's care and it's it's like touch and it's it's me finding that comfort or intimacy in the images of myself uh, that I make and then there's this whole other thing about like oh wait so now other people are gonna look at it <laughs> um and that definitely feels hard especially with work like this one um like that feels difficult uh showing showing it to people but I've found that when I am vulnerable in an image in the image that I make or as the subject in the image that um, that's generally just empathy building, it feels, and it makes me feel slowly, I don't know, slowly like more together as like a whole person, whether it's who I am and what I perceive myself to be and what other people do too. Yeah, um, I, yeah, that's so the, um, the act of care. I think with the self-portraits um, that I've been doing, there's something about like meeting meeting my face um, kind of exactly where it is that day. Like just looking at the individual features and rendering them. That's not a, that, right? Like when I paint other people, I don't make, I'm not making judgments about like whether or not their head shape looks good or like whether or not their nose looks good on their body or whatever like I'm just I'm just looking at it and so like doing that with myself has felt like um yeah absolutely like an act of care um and then it's this weird experience of feeling very seen when people see see the images like which is very different I think than even posting like a photograph or a selfie or something it feels really really intimate um, the other thought I had about the intimacy was that even though the first image, this image actually, um, was the only one that was inspired by people that I didn't know, I think what made me want to paint it was that 
I don't, I can't remember what indicator I had of this, but I had this sense that like this family, they were like, um, like an African immigrant family. Um, it might've been like a language thing that I picked up on. And so even though I didn't know them, they felt like family or like they felt very, it felt very tenderly towards them, um, which is a thing that happens when I like encounter like people that remind me of my parents or my aunts or uncles in the world. Um, so it was like, even though they were strangers, the reason I wanted to paint them was because they felt like they could be family or something. And I think I don't probably draw or paint people that I don't feel that way about. Like, I think intimacy is the thing that makes the art happen actually or a feeling, a desire for a feeling. And I would, I would say intimacy definitely is something that I think about all the time um, when I'm making work. Um, I, 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 you know, I get along with my parents very well now, but growing up, growing up is always hard. Um, so I think uh, like when I started like making drawings of my parents, like it kind of, um, you know, it was, it was kind of a, an interesting thing to do. Cause also that, you know, they're like, oh, don't draw us like that. Like, you know, they'd always want me to like fix things about the portrait or like, like, oh, like my mom was like, oh, I don't like the way I look at that one. And I'm like, just please, <laughs> like, you know, I think you're, you're beautiful. And, you know, it's just kind of like, that's, that's kind of a strange um, thing too. When you, when you make a painting with somebody else and you put it out in the world and then like hearing how they're perceiving it. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the painting of my dad, like kind of looking down at this little bug and like, kind of like, I just remember like, it's based on a photograph uh, that I took of him, uh, like at a, at a family party, like back, like when I was in high school and, um, like just like kind of watching him like interact with this like strange creature and like just kind of look at it and like there's like so much like wonderment and awe and like like I just remember like really kind of loving like observing him like playing with this <laughs> this bug <laughs> at this party um you know and when I decided to paint an image like you know that was just kind of a like I just I kept thinking of of him and like the way that he was in that moment while I was making the painting and um you know so I think um yeah, like intimacy is definitely like really, really huge, really huge part of my work um, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we can open it up for other questions. We have a little bit more time left. So um, thank you all for um, joining us in our Zoom conversation. So um, if anyone has questions, please um, bring it on. Hey everyone, uh, Judith Mullen here. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good, great. Um, I'm particularly interested in process and um, new processes. And I was wondering, this question is, I guess, specifically for Bimbola. Is that how you say your name, Bimbola? Okay, hi. Um, so really listening carefully to you talking about self-portraiture and um, your new work where you, you're moving a little bit more towards abstraction, almost like in a Chuck Close sort of a way, you know, um, kind of reminds me of that. So, and I'm very, I'm loving these pieces and that, you know, they're, they're, um, they're almost like moving into a 3D sort of off the wall thing. Are you thinking about like self-portraiture and, and continuing on perhaps pushing abstraction? Or are you, do, are you thinking like going back to the more straightforward uh, renderings or, or have you even thought about it? No, I have. And actually that, so, you know, that's, that's a really good question because it is something I've been thinking about. All of these self portraits that I'm doing right now are pretty small. They're like this big. Um, I can't, so I, I've been thinking like literally this morning, I was thinking about, um, I, right now I have about 50 and I don't know how long I'll go. And, but when I think about how they would be displayed, it is, it's not as just like, it's not individual. Um, and with the piece with the three figures, I actually experimented a lot with how I was going to position them together. Like I was thinking a lot about dimension and like, what if I, I had like cut one of them into kind of a fringe and, and had it hanging in front of the other and was thinking about like pulling up some of the fringe so that you could see through. And so um, I, I think I am moving towards like some kind of intersection between like, like with paperwork and sculpture. But part of that I think is it's gonna be like pulling all of the paper out and seeing how 
to fit them together or how they might be displayed together in a way that's more sculptural. Great, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Other questions? I, I, I thought of something as we were looking at um, Bimbola's works. Uh, there's something really beautiful about how the meshing of the images creates this like really busy facade that kind of it keeps your eyes strained and it kind of pushes people away but then like as we zoomed in um seeing like the little pencil lines where you had probably planned out the the cuts um that like right next to these like really tenderly drawn eyes like something about that really I, like it was kind of it's kind of like an amazing magic right where things come together like that where it felt so contrasted like these like tender paintings or like you can t I could tell I could project that they were tender because they were watercolor and they were like gentle um but then sometimes looking at them from farther away I was kind of like I was like my eyes like move so much but then when you come in you're like oh yeah there it is um and I think I felt pretty similar Zara about your about your quilt because there's something so painstaking about stitching about seeing stitches um and how many images you put in there it's something where it's like you need to go closer and you need to like wrap yourself in it, you know? Yeah, so just making those connections and I want to say it before we left. That's so sweet, Cassidy. Um, <laughs> we only, I love it. Um, we only have a few more minutes. Um, so Salim, do you wanna? Yeah, it actually looks here? like, it actually, it actually looks like there is a question for me in the chat. Okay, um, do it. I'll read it out loud. Anne Harris wrote, I have a broad question for Salim. What have you learned from curating this show? Um, and I was reading that question and I was thinking about it. I don't know that all of the lessons have become apparent yet because the show is still up and I tend to reflect on things like totally once they're, they're done. Um, but some of the lessons that I've already begun to kind of internalize, I think, are um, about maybe trusting in the process and the artists. You know, I, I always thought in my head, like my mind's eye, my imagination, um, that I would like to be the kind of curator who takes artists out for coffee and stays up with the artist until 2.30 in the morning talking about ideas. Um, and I think that's because I, I, like many people, influenced by all those black and white photos of artists, like, for example, like all the New York people and the, the Cedar Tavern and stuff. Um, but obviously, because of the pandemic, I couldn't do that. So it's like I, there was the kind of curator I wanted to be in my head, the cool guy curator, and then there was like what the circumstances called for. Um, and so, um, you know, I really had to lean heavily on uh, the artist and, and trust them um, because we didn't get to do studio visits. It wasn't the type of show where, um, you know, I as a curator go in and I select the work that I want. It was you guys choose. Um, and something that we talked about is um, how, you know, I believe in all the artists in the show, they all make good work and whatever they choose will come out as good work because the artists themselves are, are good and stand on a solid foundation. I think also being patient um, I mentioned earlier that I worked at the Art Institute of Chicago as a curatorial assistant in the prints and drawings department. And, you know, when we were working on shows at the Art Institute, all the artists that we work with are dead. So 
if the challenges of curating are very different. It's trying to find something to say about an artist like, uh, I don't know, Degas, where every tome and thesis has been written about him. And so just trying to present it in a new way. And so the, the things that I'm competing with are very different. You know, it's like the Academy, it's conditions. And this is the first show um, that I ever curated. And it's the first time I've worked with living artists. Um, and one of the really exciting things that I learned is that I love working with living artists because um, we only get to say new things. We're the vanguard right now. And so I like to imagine that, you know, maybe 150 years from now, some, somebody in a museum will have to compete with this and be researching this show um, because everything we get to say is really new. Um, rather than having to compete with mountains of scholarship that have already happened. Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, those are kind of the lessons I've learned now and, um, you know, and I'm looking forward to the next ones. Does well, I think I want, um, we should wrap it up. Um, yeah. and Celine, that was beautiful. And um, I want to encourage everyone to come see the exhibition. Please make a reservation. Um, the Riverside Art Center Free Art Gallery is open Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 1 to 5 p.m. And you all are most welcome to see this amazing and superlative exhibition of the kitchen sink. So thank you all. And thank you, Salim. Um, and thank you to all the artists in the exhibition. And um, please come to the Riverside Art Center. We encourage you all to see these works in person. Thank you all. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Everyone. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Is your mama there? <laughs> That's pretty sweet. <laughs>